dear friends. I'm alone with my old green canoe and it's time to leave the Barma. For better or worse, the lessons have been given and learnt, or not. How to travel light and sleep beneath the upturned canoe. How to heft the cast iron weight of the camp oven, mix the dough, bake the bread. How to accept that contradiction, lightness and heft. When to drift, when to move, and how to wait and watch. That wind's getting up a bit. But just stop and listen. Even the breeze makes some music through the trees. How long have I known this old green canoe? I remember finding the mould for the hull. It must have been around 91. It was laying in the long grass in a kangaroo flat backyard, surrounded by countless other moulds. A speedboat hull, speakers, chairs. Flipping the mould, I could see the canoe's beautiful lines. A hull would be narrow of beam, sharp in keel, a hint of tumble home, the shear as sharp as a blade. An offer was made and accepted, and a whole summer given over to the making of canoes. My grandfather, was one of South Australia's first woodwork teachers. He left me his workbench and hand tools. Beautiful things. I still use them all when making repairs to the old green canoe. They're great teachers. Now I blend their use with machines, noise and rattle and hum, but the intent is the same. And over and again, I find myself reaching for the old tools. A sharper edge here, a tap with a mallet there. Craft and beauty. Well, the decks are all glued up. So now we have to wait till morning to see what that joins like. Uh, pretty confident that uh, they'll make a nice pair of decks. So once that's glued up, we can start, uh, I'll start taking the old decks off and sand down the canoe and then we can put the new decks on and then there's quite a bit of uh, thicknessing to get off them uh, and get some shape into them before we varnish them up. As usual, it's been a, been a nice mix of using new and old tools machinery like band saws, power tools, but then right through to uh, my old grandpa's, my grandfather's hand tools, his planes and sash clamps and, and uh, measuring rods, so, and his straight edges. So it's always a lovely combination of old and new when you start doing some woodwork. I haven't done any for a long time. So I just have to patiently solve those problems again and let the hands do what they know how to do and when they don't, sit back, have a sip of the old cuppa and have a bit of a think and then tackle the job because as my grandfather used to say, measure twice, cut once. With a bit of luck we'll end up with two lovely looking decks, the timber looks just beautiful. Those old bookshelves, uh, made out of solid timber. It's quite a soft wood, so that'll be nice and light on the decks. So I'm looking forward to, uh, to having a look at them in the morning. And uh, if they look nice, then uh, getting the old decks off, uh, sanding down the canoe ready to varnish and put the new decks on as well. Thank you. 
all coming together so that beauty can be placed upon the water, responding to the lightest pressure of the paddle tip in the river. Then years and years of travel, making everything glow with a soft patina. A slow weathering of use through time and sweat. There's the old green canoe in the shade of the red gum, waiting to be placed in the river. In the morning, after the camp chores, launching on the river is fine art. Boat tethered to a tree root, current sweeping past. Overbalance risks both cargo and pride, even though there's no one to see. So one foot in the canoe, the other on land. Heave in the tucker box, centre it just right. Swag, canvas bag, journal, pencils, and last the finer accoutrements. Water bottle, river charts, one last brew in a stable cup. Orange tossed into the top of the tucker box for later. Good trim is pleasure, or the day will be all niggle and strain. Uncurl the round turn, step aboard and settle. Push off and glide out onto the river. So nice once you're up and away. Got everything you need in the boat. Camping gear and your book to read. Or your tucker in the tucker box. And a brew. And just living. Living out of the canoe and off the river. You're just part of the flow of things out here. Everything heading its way down to the coast. Water, sediment. You're just riding along with it. Slowly, slowly, but inevitably getting closer to the ocean. Reach, coil, unwind. Steer without mind. Become paddle, canoe, river. My radius is curve of hull. My pulse is dip of paddle. And all I'm seeing is the long reach ahead and life turning around the next bend. Down river to the old inland port of Ichuka. It's thump thump of steam engines. It's whistles and steam and curling wood smoke. I picture the old captains, Cadell and Randall, chasing each other up river in the Lady Augusta and the Mary Anne in 1853. Both wanted Sir Henry Fox Young's prize of 2,000 pounds. The South Australian governor setting the challenge to be the first to navigate the river from the mouth to the junction with the Darling. Speed, it was all about speed. The modern economy was coming to the old river. The boilers of their boat swelled on the heat of burning red gum. The pressure gauges climbed and climbed. The pistons began to drive. The steam whistles blew. The paddle wheels began to turn and bite into the river. The rest is legend. The paddle boat trade lasted only 60 years or so. But enough to still live in the memory of my family, who had a farm on the bank of the river in South Australia. Some of my ancestors worked the river boats down in South Australia, off the port of Morgan, which has got a very similar multi-tiered wharf. In fact, one of my ancestors drowned while working the river boats. I think he fell from the Morgan Wharf and couldn't swim.
really enjoyed working on the old green canoe for a couple of days. It's got such beautiful lines. It's such a it's such a sleek and beautiful craft, and it's nice to it's nice to pay a bit of respect to it and uh, put some new decks on it and make sure that it's in good shape to go back to the river. It really did change my life the day that I found that canoe mould in the backyard of that uh, Bendigo house out in Kangaroo Flat, I think it was. And I flipped it over in the long grass and could just see the potential in that mould um, for such a beautiful, sleek, well-proportioned canoe to travel down the river. And I've, uh, I've lived a lot of my life in that canoe. Many, many hundreds of days of work and travel and pleasure. And so uh, it's got a, some new jacks and a, and a nice varnish and uh, it's ready to go back up to the river, back to where it belongs. Thank you.